I'd like you to imagine a time when you were sick. The doctor wrote you a prescription and you're on your way to your local pharmacy to fill it. Can I have the audio, please? please. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Including his own. Loser. You want to get to the pharmacy. You're alone, back. except you're never back. really alone. You, <laughs> you keep hearing all these sounds and voices Don't in your it. head. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, Don't do it. Don't take it. They just want to poison you. It's all over. You're never going to get any better. Right into their trap. Into their trap. You have no way of distinguishing which, which of these sounds are real and which ones aren't. These voices you hear, they're always so cool to you. They keep telling you that you're stupid, that you're worthless and ungrateful. Now people are staring at you from every aisle. You wonder what you did to make the man on the television scream at you like that. Why do you even try? We are always watching. That's why we That's why we're going to put you on way. Can you go back to the PowerPoint, please? So the audio clip that you just heard is titled Cruel Voices. It's a simulated auditory hallucination that was aired on NPR's All Things Considered during a segment called The Sights and Sounds of Schizophrenia. To study the underlying causes of schizophrenia, scientists are now using brain imaging to correlate psychotic symptoms with patterns in brain activity. The most iconic of such experiments was conducted in 2002 at Stanford University. Judith Ford and her team used EEG techniques to study the most common symptom of schizophrenia, auditory hallucinations. Ford hypothesized that a failure in the corollary discharge mechanism in the brain is responsible for auditory hallucinations. Now, corollary discharge is best explained with an example. We've all noticed that we can't tickle ourselves. When we try to, a signal or a corollary discharge is sent to our brain to inform it that the action was self-generated and that no response is necessary. Ford posits that a similar corollary discharge mechanism is at work in the auditory cortex of the brain. Our thoughts are accompanied by a signal alerting our brain that our internal dialogue is self-generated. If the corollary discharge mechanism malfunctions, a thought as simple as, what a nice day, can be misinterpreted as an external voice. To test whether a corollary discharge malfunction is behind auditory hallucinations, Ford compared brain activity in healthy controls to that in schizophrenia patients during a silent state, which is shown in red on the graphs you see here, and during inner speech, which is shown in blue. Now, the component of interest on these EEG recordings is the negative N1 peak, which is used to measure how much attention the subject is giving to a stimulus. A self-generated stimulus requires less attention from the subject and should therefore correspond to a lower N1 amplitude. Ford found that the N1 component in healthy controls did in fact decrease during self-generated inner speech. However, the N1 component in schizophrenia patients did not decrease during inner speech suggesting that the corollary discharge mechanism is failing to alert schizophrenics to the fact that their internal dialogue is actually self-generated. Now, Ford's corollary discharge hypothesis is one of many theories that have been proposed to study, the, uh, that have been proposed to explain the symptoms of schizophrenia. And while our understanding of this disease has come a long way, from the days of insulin injections and electroshock therapy, it's important to remember that we're still far from fully grasping the neuroscience behind this disease. Now, um, to conclude my presentation, I was planning to give you guys this very inspiring quote, which you can read if you so choose, but instead I think I wanna share a bit more of a personal story. So, until I was eight years old, my great uncle lived with my family, and I didn't get to see him much because he spent most of his time in the hospital and um, all these years, I had absolutely no idea what was wrong with him. But three months ago, I found out that he had schizophrenia. And the reason why he slurred his speech, it wasn't because he was an alcoholic. It was because he was being treated with insulin shock therapy every single month. And so this presentation that I'm doing here, this is for him. I hope that one day we live in a world where none of us have to, have to feel ashamed or embarrassed of sharing who we really are. Thank you.